And being a tennis player, you're very aware of the weather. <laughs> you never crazy. were that aware of the weather <laughs> right. until you played tennis. I'm got I've got an interesting story to tell you. Okay. You don't. You didn't know this. I'm gonna tell you a story. A lot of people don't know. Okay. Derek Sherrod, thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate you joining me. No problem. I'm Shay Dunn, and this is the Court Ready Podcast, and I am so lucky that I have Derek Sherrod with me today. He is another one of the pillars of Black tennis in Atlanta. He's done so much for our community, so much for the youth and adults here. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to introduce him to my viewers and perhaps get into how we can further this initiative to bring more people into the sport that I love so dearly. Thank you for that. Absolutely. So why don't you do the viewers um, a little bit better justice than I did? Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us who is Derek Sherrod? Okay, well, I'm Derek Sherrod. I am a part of uh, Atlanta Black Tennis, but I'm really a newcomer because a lot of these guys here were way before me. Uh, I made it my business to meet and know a lot of them here in the community, and therefore I started a tournament called a Tennis Fam Tournament. We ran it for about eight, nine years, and then we stopped. But along that way, I met a lot of people, hundreds of people that play tennis here in Atlanta and all over the U.S. And that's how we met. Right. Couldn't tell you the exact details, but mm -hmm. I attended a few of the tournaments. Yeah. Um, and Didn't you win one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I won a yeah. couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember all the winners. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> well, thank you for that. That's awesome. No problem. Yeah, I mean, honestly, let's start there. All right. Okay. So I remember you from organizing tennis tournaments. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about what prompted you to start that process i mean tennis tournaments is not an easy feat no it's not okay so we decided that we had been to a few tournaments and like i said before a lot of people were having tournaments but they were kind of dying off and they were kind of stuck in the old model of doing tournaments they were giving you cotton shirts mm -hmm. and their customer service weren't wasn't the greatest mm -hmm. and it was for charity most of it so you really didn't get a great uh trophy when you won i see and so once we decided, Audrey and I, we decided, decided to start a tournament. When we did, we said, okay, listen, when the person wins, we want them to feel like they won Wimbledon. Right on. So we got these big gold plates, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we wanted people to feel like um, there was enough to eat. They could eat as much as they want. So we figured that we were going to do the cooking because we couldn't afford to do that on a catering type thing. I see. And then also we wanted the shirts to be the dry fit shirts, right the on. dry wick shirts, mm -hmm. so that um, they were more trendy, more fashionable. Mm -hmm. And um, and we wanted to change the colors every year. Wow. So we just want to really have the, the tennis players feel like they're really working for something. Absolutely. And uh, it took a lot of convincing to get the first tournament to go. Mm -hmm. And then once everybody saw the plates and saw how it ran, it ran on time. It just took off after that. What year was your first tournament? 2012. And give us a little bit more detail. First of all, for those listening who don't know Audrey, mm -hmm. Audrey is Derek's wife. Right. These tournaments offer something for almost all playing levels. Right. Right. So can you give us a little bit more insight on that? So uh, we decided to do the lowest level possible that we could do that people would sign up, mm -hmm. and which was 3-0. And then we would go as high as open right on. and we would get the college players and people that have been playing for a long time at a high level to play. And so the, the, the whole thing behind that is if you were if you were like the lowest level player, you still won a Wimbledon like trophy. Mm, so indeed. so you felt like, hey, you were competing. Right. And you felt proud of yourself to do that. And yeah. a lot of people it pushed a lot of people 
to continue to play tennis because mm -hmm. of that type of thing. And yep. it was it was a big hit and they would come every year, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, as I mentioned, I was still pretty young or early in my tennis career mm -hmm. when I started attending. Yeah, I remember. And you weren't really sure of yourself, but <laughs> you still right. persevered, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was an amazing time because, first of all, you and Audrey always made me and everybody else feel welcome. Right. And that was that was a key point in doing it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Yes. Okay, so why don't you share a little bit about your business? Yeah, I, I have worked with quite a few people in the tennis community helping them purchase a home. Mm -hmm. I've helped people sell their homes. Uh, some people have had homes in their lives ever since they were kids mm -hmm. and they remodeled them and said it meant a lot to them and would I help them sell the house. Big um, deal. I feel like the home buying process is something that we all need to be mm -hmm. uh, aware of in our community, how the market is working, what it takes to purchase or to sell a house. Right. Um, and so I helped, the, I helped a lot of people do that. And Audrey also does real estate, right. and she has helped a lot of tennis players buy or sell their home. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been, we've been blessed and able to do that for people. Mm -hmm. And so um, so it just means a lot that we can help the people in the community. And yeah. Thel has helped me do that. Nice. And she also helped us do the tournament. She also yep. sponsored the tournament. Yep. When those swag bags came, you know, she was responsible for buying those every year. That's awesome. And there, and but Please. this is this is why the tournament works so well because all the sponsors were within the tennis community. Mm -hmm. Everybody who helped us, you know, put things together, swag bags, the t-shirts, yes. uh, the food, security, they were all tennis players. Wow. So so when you saw those security people out there, the the, the sheriff, yeah. that was Stokes and and Kenya Stokes plays tennis, and wow. he's he he did it for me for ba almost virtually free every year. Wow, that is massive, mm -hmm. massive. You know, I personally believe that it's important, it's critical for mm -hmm. us to provide as many opportunities to play and mm -hmm. make it fun and engage more people as many opportunities as possible so that we can um, garner more interest to the sport. I mean, it's an amazing sport. Right. But, and I understand that there's politics and other um, reasons that we don't have as much representation on the professional and collegiate levels, but, you know, we do what we can here. Right. What are your thoughts? Well, the thing is, you know, a, a lot of people are into the basketball, the more exciting sports, mm -hmm. football, baseball, um, when you, if you do get into tennis, you know, it's, it's a sport of love. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing is, is that, um, that now a lot of recreational tennis in Atlanta, tennis in Atlanta, black tennis in Atlanta mm -hmm. is huge. Indeed. Right. Yeah. And it keeps growing because we keep adding more people, more beginners. That's the main thing. You have to welcome the beginners. Yes. So just like when, when you came and you were new, our goal is to make you feel comfortable. We don't want you to walk away from tennis. We want right. you to embrace it, come in and be competitive. Mm -hmm. We want to beat you one day. We want you to beat <laughs> us one day and, and, and vice versa. Now, now, now the thing about it is someone in their twenties or thirties that come, that comes to Atlanta or forties or fifties mm -hmm. comes to Atlanta. They want to play tennis. The networking is amazing. Absolutely. Okay. You will walk into a community of, doctors, lawyers, insurance, real estate, mechanics, any teachers, right. anything that you can think of that you may need to deal with in the future, the tennis community has it. It's available. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Networking is, is wonderful here. Mm -hmm. You have people of all walks from different states, different countries that are black that play tennis with us. And that's a fact. Yes. That is a fact. So as far as your goals for yourself, for, for your tennis, your involvement in the community, um, what goals do you have for the next few years? I think I've, I've, I've achieved my goals. I did the tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, I stopped doing the tournament. People beg me every time they see me <laughs> to do it. But it's, it's a lot of work to, to 
to perform at that level, given everybody what they want. Yeah. Um, my goal now is I just like going around to all the other tennis communities. I make my rounds to see people play some tennis, yeah. uh, uh, celebrate with them a little bit and, and, and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, come to our side of town, we go to this side of town. And tennis has evolved over the years of which areas you go and play tennis with. For sure. Yeah. You know, it used to be it used to be on the south side. Mm -hmm. Now it's more out where you guys are and then out there where Hurt Road is and all that stuff. So, yeah. So and, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's just been and those are different people. Those are mm -hmm. you guys are not the same people. Right. So right. it just lets you know it has grown it and evolved growing. and moved out. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. So to that end, I'm curious, you have other interests if you're not so heavily focused mm -hmm. on growing tennis but just kind of making your rounds and those sorts of things um i kind of heard you were in the hip-hop <laughs> <laughs> yeah now i used to do hip-hop before i did tennis is that right yeah and i used i used to have a studio i used to own a record label here wow, in atlanta oh no kidding yes and i used to have a, a music studio mm -hmm. in my basement and i did everything from hip-hop to neo soul to pop and r b and spoken word wow that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, I used to do that. Um, and and now I'm going to tell you, I love music, mm -hmm. but it was not as fulfilling for me, no joke, as tennis was. Are you serious? Help me understand that. How is that even possible? <laughs> so, so, so with the music industry, the music industry is what it is, mm -hmm. you know you can you can be successful or not it, it's okay. kind of hit or miss okay you're going to meet a lot of people who are not probably the best people that you're going to meet i see but when when you come to tennis everyone was genuine no one you couldn't fake that you were a pro tennis player i don't okay. care i don't care how <laughs> <laughs> you play. So you say when I get out there, nobody, I'm not fooling anybody. You're not fooling anyone. Oh, man. And that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty. Of it. They can pick you apart once they see you play. Uh -huh. And everyone is genuine. Everyone, you know, there's people that, that are CEOs for Home Depot. There are people who are in high places that for Georgia Power. Mm -hmm. I know engineers. And all those people are just genuine people I that see. just come to play tennis. So what you're saying is, they can be faking their day job, yes. but when they get to the tennis court, right. everybody has to be real. Like right. <laughs> right. you can only bring what you got. Right. And you know, and tennis is, you know, it's not expensive, but it's not cheap. I see. You know? Okay. And you have to invest so much time in it. People are going to know who you are. I see. You know? They're going to see you around. They're going to see you They're around. Gonna They're going to see the work know who that you're you putting are. in. And then right. if you're doing it right, you're going to play some other players. Right. And they're going to find out about your game. They're going right. to find out what you And have. they're going to find out about your personal life, too. <laughs> it's just it's just a fact, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. And so they're going to know, you know, okay, well, no, she's married. And mm -hmm. and, and then she has a job doing this. They have a family. Mm -hmm. And and then, then you feel more comfortable with these people. Right. You know? Yeah, certainly. You know, I talk to a lot of people about the personal element. And the fact that over the last several years, you know, I've had some challenges in life. You know, mm -hmm. we all do. We all it's, do. It's part of being adult. <laughs> right, right. And so with that said, I am super grateful for the tennis community. Mm -hmm. it, they're like second family, right. you know. And in many cases, you know, they're almost closer than some family members. Oh yeah, know? that's because true. Because we spend so much time on the tennis court. You know, for me, tennis has been an outlet. Mm -hmm. You know, in a, at a lot of times, in a lot of ways. Can you talk about for you the personal side? What does tennis mean to you and your family? Um, you know, is there anything special that it's done for you personally? So for for Audrey and I, right, our closest friends are tennis players. Wow. We live right down the street, literally. We live in the same subdivision as one of our closest friends that mm -hmm. are tennis players. And it was not done on purpose. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We, I knew where they lived. I found a house that was available. It was in their subdivision. Wow. So it just worked out perfect. I live Amazing. right down the block. I can, get on a, I can get on a skateboard and sit on it and <laughs> roll down a hill to his house. 
<laughs> um, one, of, one of Audrey's really good friends is a tennis player. Her outlet, they go out, hang out. Mm -hmm. They travel out of town together. They go out of town to play in tournaments together. Yep. So, um, and when my mother comes into town and I may have a party or get together and she'll see, when I have a party, I'll, we'll try to invite coworkers. We'll do all of that. But the majority of those people are tennis players. No kidding. And she yeah. knows them. Um, I, I've known you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't, like I don't know you, know you, right, but like right. I've known you since like two thousand nine. Yep. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, so you know, when I say, oh, that's, and, and then other people are like, oh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's Shay. You know, or, yep. or something like that. It's just I've, I've known, I've known um, uh, Coach Bo. Mm -hmm. I've known him since like 2008, 2009. Yeah. The, most of those people out there at Wave Walker, I've known for a long time. And if I haven't known them, the people out there that live down the street, they've known them for 20 or 30 years. Exactly. Yeah. And they're concerned that, that that's what I like about it. These people are truly concerned. Mm -hmm. These people will truly help you. We will truly help these people. Yeah, for sure. You know, so. For sure. Yeah. I mean, a story I tell regularly and probably my viewers are probably tired of hearing about it by now mm -hmm. but when my mom passed it was so hard on me mm -hmm. i mean it, it was shocking and all the things and right. i'm sure you know anybody who loses a parent right. you know, it's not the easiest thing right but, you know boy i was all shaken up and it was like i had two tennis families mm -hmm. you know those folks that didn't necessarily know each other mm -hmm. but they really embraced me both of them did. I mean, they were there for me. And it's like, it's like this little known secret. You know, when I was very young and in corporate, like when I was mm -hmm. working jobs and stuff, I remember not feeling like I had an identity. Right. But when I got out there and got active, especially in the tennis community, suddenly I had a new identity. Mm -hmm. It was like, I am a tennis player, right. you know? Right. And you don't have to be a great tennis player no, to you be don't. a tennis player, right. you know? And that is everything. And you don't have to be great to be competitive. Right on, right on. Because mm -hmm. there's so much tennis here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You truly, any day that it's not raining and not like, you know, 30 degrees, mm -hmm. you can find somebody who's willing to play. And being a tennis player, you're very aware of the weather. <laughs> Right. You never crazy? were that aware of the weather <laughs> right. until you played tennis. Isn't I'm got I got an interesting story to tell you. Okay. You don't you didn't know this. I'm going to tell you a story a lot of people don't know. Okay. Okay. Audrey's mother passed away from lung cancer. And actually when we used to do the tournament, we actually had a scholarship that we would give away that hardly anybody ever applied for mm. for the tournament. We get we would give it away every year, but hardly mm -hmm. anybody ever applied for it. Okay. But before her mother passed away, when her mother was sick and she was getting close to pass away, we me and Audrey we were together mm -hmm. and we were playing tennis and then her, her Audrey's from Albany. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so that. when her mother passed away they had the funeral in Albany, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just rushing around you know, mother passed away. Um, I don't know if I told anybody. I don't even know if I did. Mm -hmm. I'm just, she was already down to Albany. All I'm doing is getting my stuff together and I'm driving down to Albany. And mm -hmm. I get down to Albany and then um, we had the service like a week later. Mm -hmm. We had the service and, um, I, you know, my mind is just like a tunnel. Right. And I'm up at the front with her and, you know, everyone's upset. And then, you know, I'm keeping it together. And then um, we make our way out you know so so the whole church is so we move out we come out mm -hmm. and then these people from the tennis community start walking across the street and i lost it oh, i started oh crying God. i couldn't oh keep it together God. all oh these God. tennis people started walking across the street they were like hey Derek, you know i couldn't keep it together i did not believe they had all came down and i didn't even know from they Atlanta knew yeah. yeah yeah so very wow. close family Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. That is massive. Yes. And I'm telling you, it's it's something strange, but phenomenal. And what a blessing right. 
because they showed up for the both of you. That's really amazing. Right, right. Really amazing. You know, there's probably plenty more stories right. that we can tell. Yeah. But I, I think you've done an amazing job and I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me and I appreciate it. <laughs>